namaste and welcome i am neeraj and i'm also a student of uh, astrology uh, this is my first video in the astrology series and we'll be talking about future predictions for canada ranging from 2nd of july 2022 a little bit uh, in the past plus and going up to the 3rd september 2023 thought of uh, creating a quick video around what i think this is a highly opinionated article and astrology as you know is not a qualitative science it goes by our experience so i'm a student and astrology is like an ocean and where people can just go and take one or two drop, drops from i am also one of them so i hope uh, this helps you in you making a better decision a decision as such if you are living in canada or you are worried about what should really be happening uh, in this country as such of course i'm grateful that you are here so thanks again so so before we get started uh, this is the chart that i could confirm from multiple sources available online and in fact Uh, Canada was formed in around, around uh, 1st of July 1867, as you can see on my screen. But uh, there was no clear data around where is the capital of this country when whenever that was formed in past. So the documents were signed in 1867 in the UK, um, and this is again a Commonwealth country, as you know. Uh, but the location was not specifically given. Uh, but I could validate this information from a uh, like a document manual which the government of Canada provides. Uh, and then that's where uh, that's basically for anybody who wants to become a citizen of Canada to, or appear in the exam um, to be a citizen, they have this guide. But it was mentioned that uh, the capital of Canada was Ottawa, right from Ottawa, uh, from right from the beginning of it. That's where I start from. Uh, on the left hand side, you see the chart <clears throat> which has been given. This is how the Kundalini or um, the birth chart or the natal chart looks like in general. So um, the overall time period, of course, is from the second of July to thirty of January. The first prediction out of everything, uh, which is of course the uh, just a few more months from now. Right now we are sitting in around thirteenth of October when I'm recording this. So we are talking about a few months back to three months back from let's say October to the early January next year. So um, there's a way that I look at specifically uh, things around where the mind of the country is. If I were to treat let's say Canada as a human being. Uh, where their mind is going so of course the mind is not towards the growth but activities which may be self damaging in the long run um it's more like canada is digging its own grave and canada's business partner and allies are fueling it further uh, so that's number that's point number 1 point number 2 is of course this is not really a good time period for canada's reputation in society or in the international markets in general uh, which is bound to be affected negatively mostly <clears throat> the third prediction that i have here is there are of course the ideological differences and challenges from enemies in this time period maybe different countries and across different uh, geographies i foresee that this is basically uh, the 12th house that i foresee that there are uh, there's something uh, very aggressively but secretly secretly really with uh, foreign countries for its growth and prosperity that canada is pursuing and which is not really a good sign as it is mostly headed towards violence which in brackets i say that in those foreign countries of course and this may lead to exorbitant expenses um, increase in hospitalizations and uh, casualties etc of course in the war times <clears throat> whenever that happens so this is the time period i'm guessing it will begin now this is again continuation of uh, same date range 2nd july to the 30th of january 2023 uh, some more points around that So Canada may be funding arms, vehicles, or ammunition in multiple conflicts along uh, along to its allies, uh, NATO members, or partners. Uh, Ukraine, for example, being one of them, as uh, as uh, uh, and this of course will actually prove to be beneficial for Canada in terms of money and uh, gaining revenue from this kind of activity, which is what you would have seen in media as well. Now this is really, uh, if you believe in God and Almi Almighty, uh, this is really the best taste. For test for canada's righteousness or obligation to society or dharma in general uh, which i don't see that that will be followed people in canada think it is important to help countries in trouble uh, ukraine for instance but uh, they would prefer to stay away from such any such conflicts now this perception i see that is similar among other commonwealth countries as well um, there's a little bit of coincidence that i see but this is where um, most of this countries like australia new zealand uk and much of the british kingdom will be thinking alike now any steps towards uh, which the government of canada will be taking towards foreign conflicts funding or support would prove to be negative for canada and we foresee that 
there can be a downfall, uh, not a good position for America slash NATO slash European Union in this regard. Uh, we suspect loss of lives, including children, in this time period and steps which I discussed uh, above in the previous slides. And uh, industries that can get affected, let's say negatively, are healthcare, pharmaceuticals, housing uh, and real estate, oil and gas. Of course, it's poised to go up and Canada will have to spend more to buy whatever barrels per day they buy. So uh, we can also expect grocery bills shooting up uh, in this time range. <clears throat> Not a good sign though, of course. I'm also worried like you. So uh, there are slight chances of breaking up with a partner, allies, self, um, or in terms of business or trade partners or any kind of alliances in this time period as well. Of course, uh, all these findings are important. Why I'm looking at even this, um, you know, October, November, December, January, or let's say this three, four months of time range starting from now is of course this has an implication in the following year and uh, at least up till the September or towards the end of uh, let's say Q3 of next year. So I have taken a new time period range which is from the 30 of January <clears throat> the following time range up till 3rd of September 2023. So again the chart on the left hand side top you can see remains the same and here are some more new predictions that I would, that I, I would like to make. Uh, this time period is confusing for partnerships and allies and doesn't really look like anything positive there. Uh, aggressive partners will get support from Canada over the really peace wanting ones. There can be challenges or defeats from enemies including loss of lives uh, and many casualties during uh, due to these partnerships and alliances. Uh, it could be NATO um, and anything that we have uh, in terms of military partnerships mostly. I foresee that public will get sort of less communication about real situation on the ground and Canada may have different public communication than the UK and other member countries in the Commonwealth. So <clears throat> there can be significant challenges due to steps taken in past and cause of the downfall. Uh, time doesn't seem really a great, like a good time for partnerships and there can be disagreements with partners, allies, or NATO or similar associations. Of course, uh, uh, expect rise of national debt, <clears throat> like um, how much per pay person has to pay uh, in terms of economics, and loans, diseases and accidents. Uh, more specifically, I foresee during the during the time range of 17 Feb 2023 to 6th of March 2023, and then again followed by 16th May 2023 to um, 4th June 2023. So expect something major shifting globally. <clears throat> we are hearing about the world order and everything, but that's really uh, true uh, from an astrological standpoint. We can see in the charts that that's something which is changing. So there is a shift of power, of course, and which which will which will happen in Canada in this specific time period, at least the beginning of the that that particular situation. And I would like to continue a few more points or findings uh, based my research on this chart up till 3rd September 2023. So we foresee multiple challenges for housing industry, real estate, luxury entertainment and automobile industry. We read that stocks uh, will crash. Actually I wrote two times. So I expect that the stocks will crash and crash in this time period. The accident and other, other challenges will be the focus point for Canada in this time frame, more specifically during March, uh, June or July time frame in 2023. We can expect a drop in Canada's income and profitability, drop in property prices, stock markets, uh, whereas on the other side, gold and silver prices uh, should rise up. Uh, in general, when the stocks crash, those guys, uh, let's say gold and silver, will hold the prices up. So uh, we can also see that there will be decreased support from uh, Canada's friends and allies in general. We might also see a bit of recovery in the automobile industry, a bit of stability in national debt, but very few chances of that being uh, a possibility and it will largely go by the efforts or sincere hard work that the government of Canada would have done towards the recovery. We also foresee the challenges in online phone communications including in the internet and because the internet is going to be disturbed a bit I am I'm guessing there might be some uh, power outages or sort of loss of electricity as well but that's really a guess I'm not too sure on that point. <clears throat> One big, one big finding or the big thing which I noticed across all these findings is the launch of, uh, we call it CBDC or Central Bank Digital Currencies. Uh, we just heard that 
India launched uh, e rupee. That, that's a symbol that I've given on the presentation there. Uh, e rupee is a symbol about three days back, and US is following. I think Biden had signed something called as one four zero three seven order or similar number uh, towards that already, and secretively without I heard is not really the consensus of the uh, consensus of the Senate or the Congress there. And uh, which is, uh, so Canada can also see the something similar potentially. And uh, this is going to be global phenomena. This is mostly leading towards the control on the uh, human population, 7.3 billion, whatever we are across the globe. Uh, this is, and, and uh, by the way, all the central banks, the Bank of England, Bank of Canada, uh, Reserve Bank of India, and or the, the Bank of America, all of them are working in tandem on this silently. It is, yeah, this was initiated, uh, which I can force you again, this is astrology, by the way, uh, during the COVID crisis, especially in the beginning of 2020, and then the tests have been run uh, to, to do that. So that's why it's a global phenomena. Uh, don't think that this is happening in silos in Canada. And I have some screenshots to uh, show you that as well. Um, so what's happening around that. So, so the first one over here you can see is the... Um, Again, uh, there was, uh, this is by the way, the official Bank of Canada and the Government of Canada website, which talks about contingency planning for a central bank digital currency. There's no date that Canada is committing, at least in the public media or on their website. But if you can see clearly here that uh, around 5th, 25th of Feb 2020, which was again the midst of um, COVID crisis, uh, they have issued this uh, document. So that's just an example of what happened in Canada and on the similar uh, lines, uh, on the Indian news that I just shared with you, uh, you can see that the Reserve Bank of India announced the launch of India's own digital currency. Uh, <clears throat> now again, again from the from the looks of it, it doesn't really look like a uh, like a big deal in terms of what will happen to the cash across the economies. But uh, India right now is sort of downplaying this that uh, they might be using it along with the existing currencies and. This might not be the case that we are completely replacing the current, um, let's say, rupee in India or um, following with, um, uh, at least in India, I can talk about this, what is happening. And then we can foresee that this will be uh, followed up in other countries sooner or later. Uh, people might be looking at each other of how the other countries are doing it effectively. And then can we usually do some best practices when we have to launch? With that being the uh, last point from my side. Um, those are my two cents on predictions about what could happen in Canada from this year up till the end of uh, towards September of next year. I hope you like this video. Uh, namaste and thank you.